Shalom everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Way of the Most High.ca. Today we are supposed to be talking with Gilberto Rosado. I'm going to give him a call now. I'm going to be talking about Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter 53. He said he was ready. I don't know. Hard to find great help these days. again. So, we shall see. Technical difficulties, hope you bear with us. Anybody home, Gilberto? Alright, I'm going to message him here and see what's going on. Anyhow, I hope that you all are having a, a great day. I've had a wonderful rest myself. Um, if you haven't checked out previous debates, I talked with Sharon Benton the other day about the Apostle Paul. That was a two-hour conversation. I've been talking to numerous people online about following you on the Torah. Genesis to Deuteronomy. If you have any questions, feel free to inbox me, private message me, email me. Again, my website is thewayofthemosthigh.ca. My YouTube channel is Way of the Most High. Just going to look at these messages I'm getting on Facebook here. All right, we might finally have action here with Gilberto. Oh, yes, there he is. Uh, how do you hear me? Do you hear me okay? Yeah, this is actually <laughs> this is actually better than the discussion I had yesterday with David Reichner. Uh huh. Yeah, your sound is coming through good and and loud and clear, which. Okay, my, my normal mic is not being used right now because uh, it looks like the PC has some audio issue with that line, and um, I still haven't troubleshooted it yet, so I haven't troubleshot it yet. Okay, but we can, at least this is working. Now let me make another adjustment on the video. Um, this one second here, and then we'll be ready to go. You look handsome, okay. man. There's nothing yeah, wrong do. with it. <laughs> Sorry? You look handsome. There's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> okay, no, no, no problem. No, no I, I, I wanted to have a, uh, a recording, so that's, that's why. For sure. Do you have a YouTube channel as well? Uh, yeah, I have various YouTube channels. Uh, 
Okay, please, uh, please let me know when you're posting, um, you know, either on Facebook or pri private message or whatever. Uh, my website is thewayofthemosthigh.ca, mm -hmm. and my YouTube channel is Way of the Most High. Um, Very good. Yeah, for those who are interested, I have a lot of music, because for me, music is kind of a passion, like it's... Other than prayer, other than going about your regular duties, music is kind of kind of my thing. So I've got four inspirational playlists that are instrumental um, or songs that that are not really necessarily to do with worship. And then I also have a worship playlist as well. Um, I see you're a musician. Uh, are you do you write your own music? Yeah, there's currently a, a, a few songs on my channel. Uh, one is called Suri, which means my rock, uh, which is based upon the concept of Yah being our rock uh, from the Torah, Genesis to Deuteronomy. Uh, another song is with regards to when you eat. You're grateful for your food. You're grateful for your wine. Uh, you're grateful for water, whatever Yah has provided you to eat and to drink. That one is called Lachem. Um, so yeah, I've produced a number of, of songs that I, I really enjoy learning guitar, learning music, producing new stuff. So I will be producing more in the future, but uh, for now that's what I've got up there. Fantastic. Okay, basically, I, I would like to know what, uh, how you want to proceed, uh, so I know what the rules of engagement are. Do you have anything that's uh, a pretty, a template on or whatnot of uh, the rules, or? Well, before we before we get into um, the the subject topic is Yeshayahu Isaiah chapter fifty three, which is a very common topic. A lot of people have covered it, of course, but I haven't done it on my channel, so I wanted to do a, a discussion or debate on that topic on my channel. But uh, before we get into that, I've already introduced my channel, my website. Is there anything that you want to say with regards to any website or plug that you wanted to share before we get into that? Well, not really. I'm not into plugging things. Uh, basically, I, you know, I do have a, a different websites. I'm a website creator. I'm a man of many hats and talents and skills, which I usually call the grace of God and manifest it through the things that I do. And um, so, you know, talking about uh, one or two things wouldn't do justice to me and talking more of what I do would bore everyone else out there, your audience, so I don't really want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we can connect with the music. I do compose music myself. Oh, and praise I God. play guitar, I, I play a little, I just a little. I want to say I play violin, but I do, I do have my violin here and some keyboards. So, yeah, I've been playing guitar since I was uh, about 15 years old or so. That's excellent. Um, fifty-seven. Right on. Yeah, that that will suffice. I've been uh, for those who are curious, who am I? I'm a pastor of the uh, uh, the Sheepfold Pentecostal Church. Uh, the website for that is tspci.org, and uh, anyone can discover more about me either online or going to the website. Uh, looking up uh, Gilberto Rosado, Reverend Gilberto Rosado, whichever way you want to do that. Yeah, so that, that'll suffice for anyone that's, that wants more information about me. Okay, that's great. I had no idea you were a pastor. Um, that's actually what I've been looking for for the past 10 years. I have, I have said to people that I'd be willing to discuss online on a video recording with a pastor. The only other debate that I've had, um, Pastor Matthew Jansen of ministersnewcovenant.org, which he's not really a pastor. In my opinion, he's got a congregation of 30. He's not 
really officially ordained or whatever. Um, so, which denomination are you with, may I ask? Well, I, I was with the Assemblies of God, but right now we're doing our own council and building churches around the world and, and ordaining ministers, um, you know, in different parts of the world as, as the Lord permits and, and brings to us. So that's basically what's happening. Uh, here in the USA, we're building up congregations. And we mostly do uh, home groups, um, especially, well, we were all prepared for this COVID thing. The COVID thing didn't bother us a bit. <laughs> so, yeah, so with all the shutdowns they did, didn't affect our ministry at all. And that's basically what we do. We're doing a basic uh, discipleship ministry and helps. And more about that you can see on the website, tspci.org. Okay, so so this whole um, I was wondering about that. I was wondering how does COVID, this Corona nonsense, affect uh, assemblies and groups? And and so were you meeting in a building prior to this or what? No, well, like I said, I do my broadcast. I, I basically broadcast. I have other pastors shepherding the the other churches and groups. So yeah, I I don't have to worry about uh, anything like that. Um, mostly, it's they're small groups, and uh, they're family centered mostly. And uh, since uh, we only do a massive get together, you know, once a year or so, everyone gets together. Uh, of course, they do their uh, smaller local regional get togethers uh, every once in a while, but that hasn't been going on since the COVID. Okay. But it's totally not an essential part of the ministry, obviously. Okay. So we basically have gone unscathed. Thanks to God for that. All right. Well, glad to have you with us again. Thank you for your time. Thank you for showing up on time. And our topic tonight is Yeshayahu Isaiah chapter 53, as you're well aware. I'm just going to load up my e-sword right now. If you don't have eSword, it's a really great app. Helps you to look up things really quickly, and it actually gives you the Hebrew, at least the root. Um, doesn't give you the exact Hebrew, Hebrew text. Uh, for the exact Hebrew text, I use either a Stone Edition Tanakh or a JPS Hebrew to English. Um, a lot of people can't read a brief of Hebrew, I encourage people to actually go back to the text because the concordance only gives you the root. It doesn't give you the actual root as well as the subject and possessive or non-possessive or female or non-female. Uh, it just gives you the, the general uh, concordance word. So going to, I'm going to start in Isaiah 52, actually, because that's, this is what a lot of people need to understand, is, is these chapters and verses were not original. Originally, all they had was a scroll, and it would just be Yeshayahu, Isaiah, one through, through till the end. They didn't have verses and chapters in the original text. Uh, that was added in. So chapter 52, I'm going to start in verse 13. Behold my servant <clears throat> will deal prudently, I'm just using the general King James Version, he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many as were astonished at him at you, this his visage was marred more than any man, his form more than the sons of men. And so shall he sprinkle many nations. That word goy, goy means Gentile. He shall sprinkle many nations, and the kings shall shut their mouths at him. For what has not been told of them shall they see, and that which they had not heard, they shall consider. 
So again, the servant of Yah is Yisrael, Israel. And it clearly says that they shall sprinkle many nations. That is, Yisrael, Israel as a servant, shall sprinkle many nations, and the kings shall shut their mouths at him. So, in other words, what this text is doing is showing that this suffering servant of chapter 53 is going to have an influence on the nations, and the nations will eventually shut their mouths with regards to Yisrael or Israel, because they will be exalted above the nations. Verse 1 of chapter 53, Who has believed our report? And this is the context of, of this whole chapter. This is a report about Yisrael or Israel as the arm of Yahuwah has revealed. He will grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root from dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, that we should see him, no beauty, that we should desire him. And I would say with regards to Yisrael or Israel, that everyone seems to hate Yisrael or Israel right now, um, except for the United States. They have... They have some provisions with regards to support every year financially, uh, support politically. But otherwise, uh, since the 1940s, uh, the World War, of course, uh, everyone has hated Yisrael or Israel and always trying to take land from them. They, people support the Palestinians and the movement to usurp the state of Israel uh, and we always see in the news quite often even this year in fact we've seen a lot of people return to the land of Yisrael or Israel claiming to be from one of the 12 tribes of Yisrael or Israel but there hasn't been an en masse return to the promised land by the descendants of Abraham or Israel, which, as Yah said to his people, your, your seed shall be like the sand of the sea. So we should be expecting a lot of people to be going back to the promised land. Um, not just a few, a couple thousand like we had this year. But um, I'll hand the, the mic over to you because, in my opinion, the burden of proof lies upon Christianity or New Testament believers to prove to us that a suffering servant isn't just about suffering. Anyone can suffer. In fact, I think a lot of us are suffering. So suffering is not proof of a Messiah or an anointed deliverer. So even if Yeshua or Jesus did fit, Yeshua, uh, Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter 53. It doesn't prove that he's an anointed deliverer. But I hand over the mic to you, and, and you can feel free to say what you want about this chapter, or even even read the text for our viewers if you want. Well, I, I have a question before I, I go on. And that question is uh, in Isaiah 53, verse 2, as you read, um, I understand what you're saying about uh, the Yisrael being the servant, but who is the we? You didn't, you didn't say who the we is in that verse 2. Excellent question. This... And this is why I wanted to start within chapter 52. Because chapter 52 answers who the we is. Chapter 52, verse uh, 15, says that many nations, the kings, shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told of them, they will see. And that which they had not heard, they will consider. Um, numerous Christians, New Testament believers, read chapter 53 
not knowing that there are chapter and verse divisions in the original text. And they don't read chapter 54 either. So we're going to get to chapter 54 because chapter 53 is the report about how Yisrael or Israel as a nation has suffered. Chapter 54 is a song, a song of rejoicing about how they've been delivered from suffering now to prosperity and and deliverance. So the we in Yeshayahu, Isaiah 53, verse 2, as you mentioned, is the nations, the Gentiles. The nations that didn't care about the, the commandments of Yah, the nations that didn't care about the nation of the people of Yah. And there's only one nation that the Creator, Yah, the Most High, ever selected. He said, it's not because you're a great nation, it's not because you're special that I set my love upon you. You are the least of all peoples that I could select. But he chose Yisrael, Israel, in bondage to Egypt to crumble the kingdom of Egypt and to deliver them to the promised land and to give his laws and his statutes and his commandments. So Yah selected Yisrael, the Hebrews, the Abrim, a very small people, maybe a couple million out of out of several billion people at the time, to be his nation, a kingdom of priests, and to know his scriptures and his laws, to be an example, a light to the nations. He said in Deuteronomy 28 to, to, to 30, if you break my commandments, if you break my oath, I will scatter you to the four corners of the land. My curses will come upon you. You'll be cursed for breaking my commandments. And this Can is I have a, a question, by the way. I'm sorry, but uh, before we started, I wanted mm. to know what the uh, the rules of engagement were. Am I? Can I ask a question when you mention something, or do I have to wait till you're you're finished with whatever segment you you're doing? Yeah. No, I got no problem with you interrupting me at any point. Um, okay. It's only because I have to say one that you still didn't address the we. The language of we is it's important there because it's it's it has two people. You you can talk about the suffering servant, but the suffering servant isn't the we. And obviously, when you're writing words and you're write, relating a story or relating a message to. A people, we presume here this is Isaiah speaking to his people, and even if it was Yahweh speaking to his people, uh, when you use the word we, you know, it, it's, it's talking about some type of common ground between two parties. It says definitely a group. So, in a, so the issue is that why does he say we? Who is the we? Yeah, I've I've already explained um, in the recording. The previous verse you read they didn't talk about we. It's talking about the kings. This is not speaking. This is, these aren't the kings speaking. The, re, re, the whose report is this? Is it Yisrael's report? Well, you're you're supposed to you're supposed to know this stuff, Gilberto. You're... No, I'm asking you. Don't that don't, don't stop playing the games. I don't, <laughs> I'm not I don't playing a you. game. It's just yes, answer the question. Clearly, whose who report is this? Yeah, clearly and, this is Israel's report. Yeah, this is a report from Israel. Okay, so then when he says we. Isn't that include Israel? No, it, it includes the Gentile nations. Well, how is the Gentile, how are the Gentiles na nation being spoken on behalf of Isaiah here? You're saying that verse 2 is, is a, um, is, are the Gentile nation speaking? Is that, is that their verbiage? Yes, the, the Gentiles do not see Yisrael, Israel as a nation, as a people, as being comely, as being beautiful, as being something to be desired. 
Um, everyone has hated Israel or Israel because of their worship of Yah, because of their observance of the commandments, uh, because as a people they say that Yah, the Creator, has selected them amongst the nations. So, and this goes back to... I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but, you know, Isaiah is a prophet to whom? To Israel or to the, or to the nations? To both. To the Gentiles. Huh? To both. In, in, when he's writing Isaiah 53, who was the audience? The Gentile nations. The Gentile nations were not going to receive Isaiah 53, his, 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 his message. His message was delivered to Israel, wasn't it? No, the whole point of this is to show that as a nation, as a people, they are suffering. And chapter 54... I'm going to read chapter 54, verse 1. <clears throat> sing, O barren, you that did not bear, break forth to singing and cry aloud, that you did not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, says Yahuwah. Enlarge the place of your tent, and stretch forth the cur curtains of your habitations. Spare not to lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. For you will break forth on the right hand and on the left, and your seed will inherit the Gentiles and make desolate cities the inhabited. So chapter 54, as a continuation of chapter 53, clearly identifies that this is a message directed to not only the nation of Israel in terms of their suffering, but also to the Gentiles that Yisrael, Israel, is not just going to be this little... We, we have this vision in mind, this, this idea that Israel is just this little place down in the Middle East, this small little place with a few couple million people. And that is not at all what the vision of Yah was. He delivered them out of Egypt to the Promised Land. In fact, if you, if you travel around Saudi Arabia... Most of the people, the citizens of Saudi Arabia, will admit that that land actually belongs to Israel or Israel. They call it the land of Al-Yahud, meaning that it belongs to the tribe of Yehuda, those that worship Yah. So, in the future, when Yah ends the suffering of our people, and he overthrows all these governments and this whole corona nonsense and and all this political agenda of, of keeping us enslaved to corporations and governments that don't serve Yah. When he ends all of that, he will establish his people in the promised land and that land is going to be much greater. It's going to en encapsulate all of the Gentile nations that are around it. Okay, I understand, but we're, we're off topic, aren't we? Um, we have to stay with the Isaiah 53, the servant. All right, so again, uh, the we, uh, you keep saying that you've answered that question, and in reality, you have not. Uh, the simply the language, the, how it's speaking uh, correctly, it involves two people, Isaiah, is not talking to, there's no Gentile receiving, Isaiah is not speaking to Gentiles. This is a prophet to Israel. He is speaking to these, to his people, and we includes the writer. Whoever's writing this is part of the we. Now, if Isaiah is part of Israel, is part of the people, and when he says we, it includes him. Okay? And, and you, are, you are placing Gentiles, giving them a little bit too much credit within Torah and Tanakh. If, if, if you, Israel are the people of God, you don't have to, to be talking about Gentiles here. And Gentiles have nothing to be dealing with uh, this prophet to Israel. 
it would have been a different thing. Jonah, Jonah went and was taken to another country, another nation. That's a different matter altogether. But Isaiah, he's, he's a prophet to his people. And when you read it and you say, we, we, it's including himself. It's including himself there. Okay, but you, you say, you kept saying what you were saying, and so that's what it is. What is the, uh, if you want me to say also now, there's still another issue here altogether, and that is how God deals with his people. Let me ask you a question. What is the relationship that God has with Israel? What is that relationship? Excellent question. I think we've covered chapter 52, the end of that, to 53, verse 2. So we'll move on to 53, verse 3 in a second. Uh, we'll answer your question first before we get to verse 3. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. And you will say to Pharaoh, or Pariah, is Pe Rash Ain He Pharaoh. This says Yahuwah Yishal Israel is my son, even my firstborn. I will say to you, let my son go that he may serve me, and if you refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay your son, the firstborn. So no doubt in my mind, according to the Torah or or Genesis to Deuteronomy, the relationship that Yah has with his people is that he is, Israel as a nation, as a people, is the son of the Most High. Yah never indicates anywhere in the Old Testament that he has somebody else at his right hand, at his side, who is his son. That he, he's going to send his son to come in the flesh. There is no indication of that anywhere within the Old Testament. Okay. But moving on right. to, moving on to verse two. But that's where we need to dwell at. That, that's it right there. With what you said, you said that God, that Israel is the son. The relationship is one of sonship to Yahweh, right? Correct. To Jehovah. Which way you want to get? How you want to say that? Okay. So. Isn't what is the intention for God with Israel, with the Son? It, 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 what, it, let's put it this way: What is Yahweh's relationship with His tabernacle? Uh, his tabernacle was in Shechem or Shechem. Uh, most people are familiar with Shechem as well as you can Google online the Samaritans. The Samaritans are a people who only ever followed Yah. They only ever followed Genesis to Deuteronomy, the Torah. This is not Davidic Judaism that we are talking about, because King David broke every law in Deuteronomy chapter 17. You can read that. It says a, a king according to the laws of the Most High, was not allowed to amass for himself multiple wives, horses, gold, silver, all of that. A king was not allowed to do those things. King David was like the most unrighteous person that, that could ever be elected as a king. He killed somebody else to obtain his wife, committed adultery, and so on and so forth. But, but that, that wasn't God's intention, was it? Was, did God intend for Israel to have a king? Yes, he did. In fact, in, in the Torah, in Deuteronomy chapter 17, we can read Deuteronomy chapter 17 if you want. It's, uh, that's what, where it talks about if you elect for yourself a king. If, if you elect. Right. So, how about what did Yahweh say to, uh, was it Nathaniel? When Israel wanted a king? So, Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 14. 
Yah knew that they were going to come into the promised land. He said, when you come into the land which Yahuwah gives to you, and you possess it, verse 14, Deuteronomy 17, 14, you dwell therein, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations are around me, you will in no wise set a king over you, whom Yahweh your mighty one will choose. From among your brethren you will set a king over you. You will not set a stranger over you, which is not your brother. So this goes to, to today's politics. People like voting. They like going to the United States voting booths. Vote for Trump. Vote for Biden. No. This says... You will not elect for you a stranger that is not your brother. Trump and Biden are not our, our brethren, neither is Putin or any other nation. Verse 16, He will not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt, that he should multiply horses. This says Yahuwah, you will henceforth return no more that way. Nor shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turns away. Neither shall he multiply to himself silver and gold. So, David broke, according to Davidic Judaism, and writings that are outside of Genesis to Deuteronomy, King David came 500 years after the Torah. A lot of people don't realize that. 500 years after Yah gave his oath, his covenant, his laws, his commands, his statutes to his people, then along comes David and says, you know what? We're not going to worship in Shechem anymore. We're not going to go three times a year to Mount Garzim and Mount Ibal to recite the Torah. We're going to look at Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which is nowhere mentioned. Jerusalem is nowhere mentioned in Genesis to Deuteronomy. And we're going to go there and we're going we're gonna to establish a pagan building, a temple. But uh, Jerusalem is not, wasn't it called Salem before? Shalom? Uh, Shalom is mentioned, yes, in, in Scripture. And but it's not the same place? I'm just asking. That's what no, as, as far as a... As far as a city, as far as an established city, it is not mentioned within the Torah. Um, afterwards, after King David... Okay. Mm. But remember, you know, like, again, you're going too far with David. I, I don't know why you're doing that. Maybe because you want to address the... Is this servant Yeshua or something like that? I, I can understand where you're going to David... But uh, <clears throat> the, my issue is way back before David, like you just said. It's 500 years after the Torah. I, I'm dealing still with Torah. I'm still, I'm still dealing with it. Um, you say that the tabernacle, the placement of the tabernacle, where was it? It was in the midst of the people, right, of the 12 tribes. Is that correct? Yes, in Shechem. Now, you are also aware that the, the Yahweh's desire was always to dwell among his people. Is that correct? Is that uh, what's in Torah? Oh, for sure, yeah. 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 Right. And you see that in the... In Genesis, even, uh, you know, Yahweh would walk in the garden, so to speak, would, would go and speak with Adam and, and, and pass time with Adam there in the garden. Right? That's in Torah as well, isn't it? For sure, yeah. And then you see that the tabernacle where the uh, presence, the Shekinah of Yahweh and his presence would be in the midst of his people. And you already confirm that the relationship between Yahweh and his people is one of father and son. Right. As, right, yes. But notice that if Israel or Israel is the son of Yahweh, then you see that his, the presence of God, of Yahweh, is in the midst of his son. 
in that center, when you see, when you lay out the tabernacle and the 12 tribes as he describes, where they should be placed or standing or encamped around the tabernacle. So we have the clear indication by, by Yahweh in his scripture that he is in fact in dwelling amongst the people as he said that he would do. And we see him repeat that not only for the tabernacle, but we see that he repeats that throughout the Tanakh. Isn't that correct? Yeah, Yah is dwelling in our midst. That's the whole point of, of the future. Right. But the, the whole point is that in the relationship, the, the son, as you say, the servant here is the son of Yahweh. Isn't that correct? Correct. All right. Now, I just want to make sure that we understand exactly what the Torah is saying and teaching and also what, what the uh, prophets are also confirming. It's so very important that we understand that, that that picture is very clear in Torah and, and, and as well as in, with the prophets. It's a very clear message. Let's get back to Isaiah 53. Now, if you're saying that the Israel is the servant, the suffering servant, right, as you, as you said, and you also know that many servants have suffered. For sure, yeah. Yeah, and so um, it is. It, it it would be. It behooves you to also comprehend that Yisra that Yisrael. That, why is Yisrael called Yisrael? You you started saying that it started at the at Mount Sinai, isn't that correct? Well, if you go back to something you said before. That God has had chosen the nation there at, at, at Sinai. Didn't he choose beforehand? Just going to um, okay, Deuteronomy chapter ten, verse fifteen. Only Yahuwah had delight in your fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them. And you, above all people, as it is this day. So yes, Yah chose the seed of Abraham, the seed of Israel, above all nations, above all peoples. The word is um, or people, I mean. Okay. And, so, and, and obviously, you know, well, Ab Abraham, his name changed from Abram. Abram being a singular and then Abraham being a plural. Obviously, for the multitudes that would come from, that the Yahweh would bless him with, right? In terms of descendants. Yeah, I won't argue with you on that. The letter, the addition of the letter He is, the letter He represents to behold or to open a window or to open uh, a multitude. So he definitely multiplied just the same as the the name of Shara or Sarah. He added the letter He to the name of Shara or Sarah uh, to indicate that he was opening a, a window, opening a multitude. So God uses even his, he uses the 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 Hebrew character and, and, and with its meaning, so that it has its own meaning, doesn't it? That's correct, yeah. It, what, it is in the character a symbol? Would you call it a symbol? Yeah, all of the letters you can find on my website, you can find the ancient pictures. Each letter was, was more like an Egyptian hieroglyphic, right. uh, that each letter represented something. So yes. let's move on to chapter... Isaiah 53, verse 3, says that he was rejected of men. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with, and this is where I differ with the English translation in Christian Bibles, it says grief, but the actual word is chali, spelled chet lamed yod. That actually means sickness. 
That means this is a person who is very sick. We hid our faces from him. Why would you hide your face from somebody? It's because he's sick. And this goes to, to today's modern coronavirus nonsense. If you're sick, go home and isolate yourself. The Torah talks about isolation. It says, if you're sick, you go home, you isolate yourself. And that goes to today's modern coronavirus. Isolate yourself. Surely he has borne our sicknesses, is what it should say, not griefs. He has carried our sufferings, our sorrows, which means to be afflicted, to be stricken. We did esteem him stricken as smitten, Mekah, of Yah, and afflicted, meaning Ainu, Ayin Nun He. He is afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our crookednesses. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So, if we understand, as according to chapter 52, that this is the nations looking at Israel, the nations, the Gentiles, they are looking at Israel, Israel, as a people. Israel, Israel as a people has suffered, they've been scattered to the four corners of all the lands, just as Deuteronomy 28, as I said earlier, had predicted would happen if they broke the commandments. So these are people that are suffering, and the Gentiles, the nations, they're hearing this report, and they're looking at Israel or Israel as a people that are suffering. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. This is a direct movement away from the commandments of the Torah, the commandments of Yah, Genesis to Deuteronomy. Yah is laid Who's upon him. What's that? Who's making that movement away from Yah? Uh, both both Israel as well as the nations. Now, now, why is it now that the we is both Israel and the nations, and before you insist that it's just the Gentile nations? I mean, what makes a difference? Both are involved. Clearly, the report is regarding the nation of Israel. But if Israel, and then if Israel is involved, the we beforehand. They are also the ones looking at this uh, stricken servant. They, you can't be, it can't be that they're the same. How can you be the stricken servant and then also be observing? Because in the end, it's not the people who suffered, it's their descendants that are going to see it. You understand? You're, you're just bringing, you're putting things, you're grasping at straws. That's no, not how it is. You're reading the text and you're, you're pulling in from every little uh, corner you can. No, that's Chuck. Not the way that, I'm sorry, but the, that's not the way uh, you need to be looking at the Torah. That's a pulling at straws is not the intention of, of Yahweh for someone to read his Torah and to have understanding. Chapter 54, <clears throat> chapter 54 get, tells get you to the error of Ephraim, to the drunkenness of Ephraim. I'm not sure how the drunkenness of Ephraim, if you're referring because to... They his... did not understand. They did not gain wisdom from their practice of following Torah. The did other... not make that very clear. I, I, have, I have shared with you specific scriptural texts, and I've even shared with the audience the Hebrew words that have been mistranslated. That's, your mistranslation is based on your, your assumption that all Christians... No, are you telling me that Yeshua or Jesus was sick? Was he ever sick? Ever, anywhere sick, in the New Testament? Sickness comes from sin. Was Yeshua or Jesus ever sick? He took upon the sicknesses, the sickness of man. So no. You have to understand 
Let's look at look at what's happening here. Sickness came from sin. So whenever you see sickness, especially in a, in a text like what you're doing here in Isaiah 53, it's it's referring to sin, the the effect of sin in a on, on a person. I'm in sorry. A human being. I'm because sorry. <laughs> Yahweh did not. The sickness came in because of Adam's sin. Yahweh did not create sickness. It was not in the Garden of Eden. You're avoiding the question. Was no, Yeshua? I'm not avoiding the question. Was it's Torah. was Yeshua? It's in the beginning. Was Je these are the first things in Torah. Was Yeshua? Was Jesus ever sick? That's the point. Okay, let's go back to what you said. You say that the nations are seeing this servant suffer. Yes. The nations saw a crucified Christ because if, that, if, the, you're, if you're trying to say that these are the Gentile nations, well, <laughs> what, what the, the Gentile nations were not there in Jerusalem. There, there's nothing in this text the, that we the, the all, thing all the Gentile give her, nations though. know about Jesus is his suffering. The, there, is, there, is, sin. there is nothing in this text that talks about a man being nailed to a board. That's that's the fact. Now, now, what now, we're addressing... We something else. We're talking about sickness. I'm yeah. addressing the issue of sickness. Don't bring something else in. It's, it's not relevant here. Well, exactly. And, 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 you... Like I said, I'm not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not defending the positive of Christianity. I'm just challenging your viewpoint. That's but you, all. It but has you haven't, to do with Christianity at all. You haven't showed us it's anywhere. If I was a Torah student, you were trying to teach me Torah and teach me about the prophets, I have a serious question here. That's it. It has nothing to do with Christianity at all. What's your serious Simple question? The fact is that sickness came in due to sin. And now you're telling me that this uh, servant here is being seen by the Gentile nations. Gentile nations didn't see Yeshua. They heard about it. And so the, the, the speaking of Torah and the speaking in the Tanakh and the prophet here about sickness that's being witnessed supposedly by the Gentile nations is obviously a reference to the sin that he took upon himself for all, all the others, and then brought about healing. That's but not, the, that's not the, that that the healing is a result. Okay, but, so this is, let's say this is Israel here, like you say. Let's go through with that. So how are the nations healed? Go ahead. Isaiah 53, 5. No, we're still in verse 3. It said that he was despised and rejected of people of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with sickness. We hid our faces from him. The only people that you hide your face from are people who are sick, because you don't want to get sick. So you hide your well, face people, from them. You're not, you don't want to confront the truth. That's also another way to hide your face. It's not dealing with the truth and not looking at the light. Nice try. Surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our strikings, our sorrows. We did esteem him stricken and smitten of Yahuwah and afflicted or suffering. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our crookednesses. And Who's the chastisement. Gentiles or Israel? The, uh, Absolutely. The Gentiles. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. And with his stripes we are healed. Verse 6. So, all... so you're saying that Israel was, was afflicted for the tra transgressions of the Gentile nations. Correct, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, you know, I'm, I'm going to laugh at that, right? Of course. Because you have Yahweh, Yahweh himself complaining about Israel, not the Gentile nations. Jeremiah 31 31 and 32 says very clearly 
that Israel broke his covenant. That's so right. Israel had nothing to do with Gentile nations at all. Well, well, we can get to Jeremiah 31 if you like. Um, well, that's it. Like I said, I'm just saying that your, your, your posit that this is the, that Yisrael is the servant here has a few problems that you have to deal with. No, it doesn't. Uh, Jeremiah 31 actually contradicts the New Testament because it says, I will place my laws within your hearts and my commandments within their hearts. They will circumcise their hearts which contradicts Galatians 5, it contradicts the whole of the New Testament, because Christians don't even want to observe the law. New Testament believers don't want to follow the commandments of Yah. That, that is also not true. You have a total misunderstanding of Christianity. I will elucidate you whenever you feel ready. But that is totally untrue. All right, you can believe that if you want, but there's no. No, I don't. It's not that I believe. I I show people that it's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. But we, when we get when we get to it, because we still have to deal with this, the dwelling of God within in Israel. This is uh, we're still dealing with this issue. I'm going to show you. <laughs> okay, we've got. Uh, we have one hour left, in terms of time because I have another debate, another discussion lined up with uh, another guest. Um, we're currently, we've, we've covered the first six verses. Verse 7, he was afflicted, he did not open his mouth. He was brought like a lamb to the slaughter as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he did not open his mouth. From the prison and from judgment, he shall declare his de generation. Who shall declare his generation? Yeshua, Jesus, did not have any generation. He did not have children. He was cut out from the land of the living, the transgression of my people. He was stricken. With his grave was the wicked and the rich in his death, because he had not done no violence, neither was deceit in his mouth, yet pleased Yahuwah to bruise him. Put him to grief when he shall make his soul an offering for transgression. He shall he see his seed. Zanai. You're, you're speeding through your difficult verses. Here. I am, I am because... He was stricken listen, for the transgression. Listen, we only he have... We only have... We have one hour. We have one hour. We have one hour, Gilberto. Gilberto so. Yeah, but but deal, deal, with the, uh, deal with the text. I am. I just sped through the translation, the as you said. of my people. Whose people transgressed? Yeah. So, but look, it says that he was cut off from the land of the living. But yet verse 10 says, he shall see his seed, his zarai. Zain, rash, ayin. Zarai, yes. meaning seed. And his days shall be not, long and shall, not, shall prosper in right. the land. Yeshua, Jesus, did not have a long life. He didn't have any children. He how? was cut off. He was cut off, though, right? So how do you ex that. how do you explain verse ten then? What's your explanation? Verse ten. Now we're jumping now more. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Which part of this you you have an issue with? He shall see his seed, and yes. shall prolong his days. Where is the long life and where are the long children of Yeshua or Jesus? You, you, uh, you, you surely jest. W weren't you a, a Christian of some type before? Uh, I'm sorry. I did. You're avo I'm, I'm, avoiding the question. Let's not talk no, about it. No, I'm not avoiding the question. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just astonished that you're asking this question. Let, let me point Why? out something. Can you, can you not address the... things you're missing here. First of all, first of all, there is more than one way to have seed. Okay. There is more than one way to have seed. According to scripture, you, prove there, your point according to scripture. There is a physical seed and there is a spiritual seed. Where according to the Old Testament? No, no, you, yeah, you, 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 you said according to the Old Testament. That's now right. You're limiting well, what... You're, you're limiting <laughs> what God has allowed. And exactly. So, right here. you have to you're ask yourself. what God has allowed 
to go through in civilization as his word, which includes something called the New Testament. So you, if you, if you know, there's there's New Test Testament churches that cut out the Old Testament, which I abhor. <laughs> it's a travesty. Why? But I also why should they? they that's the that's the First Testament. It has to be. It's the basis for understanding the new one. But it makes so no again, sense according to the Old I, Testament. I also, if, if God permits the New Testament to endure as it has then you cannot just eliminate it and ignore it. That cannot be ignored. Okay. So in any case, the New Testament was written by Jews, written by uh, descendants of Israel. If you, th if you, are, opinion, if you honestly it, think that somebody like me no, who follows the Torah opinion, would write the New opinion, Testament. Abraham had seed that was not just physical seed. And they say by faith. And through faith, we are the seed of Abraham. Okay, So that's what the Bible... We didn't that need the, that. that we, that we, the whole world. No, listen. You're you're trying to make it. <laughs> refer to. You're you're desperately. As C. You're desperately. So, you're desperately trying to believe that you are a son I'm not of God. Desperately, Yon. no. I don't have to be desperate. Listen, it's that you're ignoring the fact of Genesis one one. No, you're, Genesis you're one ignoring one, Genesis one one. The first line of Torah. It specifically states that in the beginning. Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. Okay? That's the first thing. Very first thing. Okay? So, uh, do you think that Yahweh lives in a physical reality in, 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 in his kingdom, or wherever Yahweh is, everywhere he is? Is he physical? He isn't. You know the answer. Okay? So, but yet, you're limiting all your understanding of Torah to physical limitations, as if Yahweh is also limited to the physical things. Did he not speak with Moshe from a burning bush that did not burn? Didn't Yahweh do uh, many things that were miraculous, open up the sea so that Yisrael can pass through Yet Pharaoh and his chariots were drowned. You know, so don't come with the now with the scripture, with his words, and limit it to only a physical understanding. Because that you're really shortchanging Yahweh. Totally shortchanging Yahweh. How can you learn anything if everything is just going to be physical with you? There is spiritual. He is spirit. He's not physical. So when are we going to see some understanding? What is wisdom? Wisdom is just physical things. Instead of being wise, are we supposed to be civil engineers? Because everything is physical. Everything's to be interpreted in the physical. So then there's no wisdom. It's just civil engineering. I won't. I won't interrupt you. Are you finished? You're no, no, go ahead. I, I just. I'm just saying. <laughs> the things that you say, your apologetics are based on physicality. Yet we're talking about an internal and spiritual God. No, I'm. I'm. I'm just trying to follow the protocols of, of a proper discussion or debate. So the proper when discussion is that Yahweh. Yahweh. He said that he will dwell amongst his people. If Yahweh is in his people, amongst his people, but you, what you're also forgetting, or I don't know if you know this or not, but in ancient times, the nations identified with their deities. The Pharaoh, for example, in Israel, was their deity incarnate. Okay. And he represented their deity in the flesh. This is the background 
the setting of everything that Yahweh is doing with his people. When he is making himself amongst the people. Just letting you know we have we have half an hour left, so yeah. if you so want to keep preaching, amongst go his ahead. People, and being amongst his people, what does that make them? It makes them one. Isn't that the point of being in the midst of his people? To be one with them? That they be one with him? That's the question. What, what, what was the purpose of Yahweh being, having his tabernacle set dead center in the middle, in the midst of all the 12 tribes? Are you complete yet? We got half an hour left. Well, like I said, the, if, if you're going to uh, just let me talk, then I'll talk. <laughs> well, I'm just yeah, saying, it, you're, it, you're it, taking it, up it, most it, of the time. It's, it's, it's you're, that. You interrupt me well, constantly. You, want to that or you, want, you don't want to address that. My point is, you you interrupt me all the time. I, like I said before, listen. I don't I, interrupt you, know, you when I you're talking. You the rules of the debate from the beginning. That's why I asked. I told you, I don't, I don't interrupt you. You need, you need you to interrupt get me. your template ready and, and tell your guests exactly what is allowed and what isn't allowed. I already told okay. you, like, Basically, I'm not, I'm not going to interrupt I you when you I, I don't have a problem with Yisrael being the servant here. That doesn't cause a problem for me. Okay, how is, how is Yeshua it, Jesus, it, it, how it is he the Messiah? does not disprove the Christian positive, though. Yes, it, it does. It does not at all disprove the Christian positive. Anyone can suffer, and you have denied that Yeshua That's or right. Jesus was ever sick. No, yeah. I never said that. Well, when was when Yeshua or Jesus ever sick? When? He took upon himself, in the, in the Christian doctrine, he takes upon himself all of our sins. And the infirmities and sicknesses and maladies or a result of sin. It's, it is a result of sin. That's it. If, if in the Christian doctrine, Yeshua takes upon himself the transgressions, the sickness came as a result of those transgressions. You're getting hung up with, with, with the sicknesses, but when, when we read it, we see the result of sin. That, that is the byproduct of sin, sickness. And the greatest sickness of all, according to medical professionals, is death. It is a sickness. If death is the uh, payment for sin, is the result of sin, that's the sickness. That's what it is. It is a sickness, death itself. So what is the result of sin? Death. That, that was the curse. That is the penalty, isn't it? And then Yahweh say that uh, if you don't do this, you shall surely die. Death is a sickness. All right, but again, let us not let us not get stuck up in 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 the realities of, of science, of medical science and knowledge. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> yeah. I was saying that clearly. The servant here was sick, and people hid their faces from him. According to the New Testament, no one hid their faces from Yeshua or Jesus for being sick. It's not like he was a leper. It's not like he was ever sick. So you're saying that always, always, when people hide to sickness... Absolutely. The only reason, according to this text... Why, why did Moshe hide his face? The, the second thing is, is that which you are vo avoiding... I'm not avoiding. You, you, yes, I, I'm answering... You're avoiding I'm the fact you that... that <laughs> your thinking is incorrect. You're avoiding the you're fact that he had children. And Torah disagrees with you. It's simple. Torah disagrees. Moshe hid his face. He, they had to cover his face. You keep interrupting me. And that's, true. that's fine if you want. But the fact of the you matter is, I, I, I said very clearly that he had seed, children that he had seen. You're saying that those, chil children. 
Your your belief is that those those are spiritual children. Again, Jewish people who wrote the New <laughs> Testament. Jewish people did not write the New Testament. That's a fact. These, where's these where's your historical who, record? These were the people who saw Jesus. Where is your historical record that any Jewish person wrote the New Testament? People who saw Jesus and heard him teaching and speaking, they, they're the ones who said that Abraham's seed is by faith. They're the ones who said, who gave the explanation of, of the things that I'm talking to you about. Where is your Old Testament text? You complain to Yisrael because... The bottom line here is that Yisrael is the cause of your issue. This it is isn't the, Gentile nature. This is definitely the worst discussion I've ever had. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure because I'm the only one who's giving you a run for your money. See? You're the That's same what, as Lou White. I debated Lou White oh, 15 yeah, years ago. And you're trying to paint this you don't want to accept you don't Anybody want to accept that this is a literal see, text can see the twisting that you're doing and the ignorance that you're applying not that you have it god forbid but that you're applying to your reading of scripture because you have to say that it's spiritual not literal no i don't i don't have to say it yes you do because no, clearly the text like says said, like i said if you, if you, you're the one that's breaking grammatical rules. The guy so was that sick. Becomes a servant. That Yisrael becomes the suffering servant. Okay. He was sick, but I'm he had children. You, I don't have a problem with it. Because again, I don't need. I, there's no conflict of Isaiah 53 being the suffering servant. That Yisrael is the suffering servant. I have no problem with that. How does you know that... why they have no problem with that? Because both the Old Testament God desire to be one with Yisrael. And so therefore, Yisrael is a representation. That's your opinion. God. That's your opinion. Among the nations. That's your interpretation. That's some interpretation. Look, the, the guy was the, sick. The guy had children. You you deny that those things are literal. Does, you spiritualize does Yisrael it. have children? Does Yisrael have children? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to argue your point for you, you see? But that's where you're going to get stuck. Because I'm going to argue your point. Yisrael has children. He, he, Yisrael has produced seed. As a matter of fact, all across the nation. Amen. Yisrael has produced seed. Yes. But God has been in the midst of Yisrael from the tabernacle. And so what it, what, it, what it shows is that as the New Testament shows as well, as Jesus said that he is one with the Father and that you will be one with me. Where is your Old Testament text? I'm sorry? You haven't provided any text. So far, we've it's been in the doing... Bible. Listen, again, it's like I said, you want, you want oh, me to get the text? I can get the text for you. That's, that's not a problem. I, I'll, I'll get the text for you right now. I don't see why you want to waste the time when uh, you should know that that's in the Scripture. My point is, is you, you, you refuse to address the fact that Isaiah 53, verse 3, is talking about a physical sickness and physical children. It, it, that's okay. That's really yeah. So okay. you spiritualize Again, it. That's fine. That's fine. This is great that for doesn't this affect, That doesn't affect. This that is on it video record, man. Referring, it's also referring to yes to Jesus. Now let me let me tell you something else. You know <laughs> that. You know that. Why did Why did God tell the prophet to marry a prostitute? Let's not change the subject. Well, I'm not changing the subject. This has to do with this. So my point is, okay, let me just cut it short because I don't want to tax you. 
God wanted the prophet to marry a prostitute as an example, a symbol. That's all I wanted to say with that. Prove to you that God does things as a symbol, as an example for a teaching. After all, that's what Torah means, doesn't it? To instruct. Uh, you're looking at things in the physical, and that's, and that's fine, okay? But you have to understand that God is not teaching us the physical things. God is spiritual. He's teaching us spiritual things. Okay? So what is the understanding that we're supposed to get? Now, if he's talking about a, a, a servant that's suffering, okay, and you, as, a, as, a, as Israel... As a Hebrew, as a Jewish person, fine. You see it as Yisrael, wonderful. But that does not take away Yahweh's practice of using situations and his word in a spiritual sense to mean spiritual things, to give us wisdom and understanding. Do you agree that the purpose of Torah is to make one wise? No, the purpose of Torah is to cause people to follow his commands and his laws and to have a relationship with the Creator. Well, so there's no wisdom or understanding involved? The wisdom and understanding is in what Yah has given us. Yeah, right. Well, but that's what we're talking about, right? No, is we're not. Kind of, we're, we're talking that about... Is a benefit, a result <laughs> like, of, of knowing, to, uh, studying Torah and living, living Torah? You will not accept that Israel is a nation has suffered, and but will see no, their I children. No, I do accept that. I do accept it. I, I don't have a problem. I told you again. I, I said it before. You're not listening, obviously. I have no problem with Isaiah 53 referring to a suffering servant and it being Israel. I have no problem with that. But that does not mean that it, it's not also speaking about Jesus. It, ha it does not limit it. Absolutely, because Yeshua, Jesus, was never sick and he never had children. I just want to go no, through... Again, like I said, if, if this is extrapolated into a spiritual sense, then of course he did, and he was. So simply, I understand where the, the Torahic teaching, especially from the rabbis, excluded a previous understanding, of, according to Pardes. You know what Pardes is, right? Yeah, Pardes is a, a modern uh, means of interpretation, which is bullcrap. It's not modern. It's not yes, modern. it is, absolutely. No, no, it's talking about... You're the saying that they, had, they did not have Pardes back in the first the century. The P-A-R-D-E-S is referring, to, <laughs> is referring to the ways this, the Torah was interpreted in throughout history. No, it was never interpreted in terms of Sod. In terms of the S, the Samek, the Sod, the mystery religion, this was not prior to New Testament. This is long after, centuries after, that they decided to come upon this allegorical mystery religion, which is based upon Christianity. It's okay. nonsense. All right, I'll take that from you. Go ahead. So, chapter 54 says, Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitations and spare and lengthen your courts, lengthen your states, stakes. For Yahuwah on the right hand and on the left, your seat will inherit the Gentiles. If Yeshua or Jesus was the suffering servant, why haven't we inherited the nations then? Uh, he has. No, we have not. Well, who, who we're say, supposed we, to believe. Israel? We're supposed to believe that after Yeshua or Jesus died that somehow we've overcome the nations, we're still in no, the nations. No, no, it's your misinterpretation, of course. No, according it's not. To your interpretation, You're believing in false to prophecy. According your interpretation, that it's a problem. But if, if the suffering servant is in fact Jesus Christ, then that is not a problem, is it? He has inherited the nations, all the nations. So for 2,000 years, he's there done nothing. People, there are people who are part of God's family through Jesus Christ. That's it. That's what they believe. So, again, but that, that in, it's in harmony with what you just read. Really? 
Okay. So that is in that is obviously a a fulfillment of what you're saying. However, you don't want to accept it. That's fine. Like I said, but there's still a a fulfillment if you look if you allow for God to be spiritual and for God to have some spiritual design and communication at all, then Jesus does fit the bill. What do you do with Matthew chapter 16, verse 28? Verily I say to you, there shall be some standing here which shall not taste of death until they see the son of Adam coming in his kingdom. So for 2,000 years we've had, we've had nothing but suffering. Where is Yeshua? Where is this kingdom? That you said, where is that again in Matthew? 16, 28. Matthew 16, 28. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Okay, go ahead. Clearly, these people have died. It's it's two thousand years now. We're we're still waiting. Well, the first thing is what what he meant by those standing here, and he he also pre qualifies it by saying verily. Okay, so again, you're going to look at it in your physical civil engineering mindset. Right? So that's the only interpretation you have. You see, the problem here, let me explain something, Sean. This is why I don't like to do debates. I don't like to do debates because when you insist on not seeing something, you won't see it. It doesn't matter what is said to you, you won't see it. It's like wearing glasses that have a color on them. It's a filter. You simply will not see that color, period. You refuse to, in this sense, to see it. So there's no point. This is, uh, you know, you want to have debates. You see, I don't have debates the way you do them, because the way you do them is like your side is going to be obstinate in what you believe in, and you assume, and in my case here today, but in most of your other debates, you would, ass you would assume or expect that the other side be obstinate in their, in their soul. Okay? But today you found someone a little different. See, because I don't have a problem with you. I understand exactly what you're doing. See, I, I seek for truth. See, that's the difference. I'm willing to give up everything I have when for finding truth, if it's different than what I have already. No, you're not. You're, you're trying to spiritualize or, or, or interpret I'm trying, differently. I, I know that Yahweh is spiritual, that's all. And you're, and you're blaming me for expecting spiritual things from a spiritual God. No, listen, when, when you read the Old Testament, when you read any text before your New Testament, you have to ask yourself, how did people understand this text prior to the New Testament blasphemy coming into play? Right. Well, you don't do I, that. I, I, I know the you answer don't do to that. You, don't, you do not read Isaiah 53 as being ref reference to physical children and to actual sickness. Right. You interpret it through your New Testament lenses that Yeshua or Jesus somehow healed people. He, he was never sick. And the children that are referred to in this text 
are somehow spiritual. People never understood this text that way prior to the New Testament. So you're reinterpreting. I understand that. That's called redaction, my friend. No, no, it's not. It's called it's eisegesis. Called... That's not exegesis. That's eisegesis. If no, you're it thrilled... isn't. It yes, isn't. it is. And absolutely. And why? No, it isn't. It's simply because when God is speaking to Israel, right? The Gentile nations are not part of that conversation. Am I correct? So if God, uh, is, speaking wrong, with, wrong, if God wrong, is speaking with Israel, wrong, 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 wrong. Well, okay, explain. Go ahead. Correct me. I'm, I'm, I'm real with that. Go ahead. Who has believed our report? Who is the report to? Clearly, it's to Who the Gentiles. Yeah. Read chapter fifty-four. No, I, I, it's fine. That's not a problem. Like I said. It's not a problem. No, it's a problem for you but because still, you're misinterpreting. You, aren't you defending us reading it in, in the physical sense? Isn't that your posit? Everything within the Torah, within the Old Testament is but physical. But the Gentiles the do not have any framework. This whole spiritualization of things the, is the, come the about Gentiles through the Gentiles do not have the framework that Israel has. Is that agreed? No, absolutely not. Yisrael has oh, been a light to the nation. Say no. Do, 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 do the Gentile nations share the suffering of Israel throughout history? The Gentile nations have learned from Yisrael or Israel in terms of them being a light to the nations, in terms of sharing the Creator, in terms Israel of sharing the Exodus. has been a light to the nations. Right. That's correct. Huh. Every nation knows the story of the Exodus now. Beyond a doubt. By, if you go by, on, by, the, by this land or by the Christians? If you go on YouTube, you can Google the Exodus. Everybody knows about it now. It's not yeah, everyone saw hidden the movie, story. Right? That's that right. wasn't done by the Jews, was it? <laughs> it was, I'm yeah, asking, actually. Like you're saying, you're making, you're making statements, but it's not, you know, you're not... It's, providing the support. These things were done by Gentiles because of the Christian church. No, that's absolutely false. Anyway, oh, uh, listen, our time, listen, is, our time is up. All of civilization is due to the, to the Christian church. I don't know where you see that Israel is the one that has brought the uh, Jerusalem and the story of, of whatever happened in Jerusalem to the world. Our time is up. All right. The point is, we have discussed. No, 